I want these to be married together. Okay, let's get into some hair. You guys want to see some hair? Yeah. So anyway, my inspiration for this weekend was Fashion Museum. Okay, Fashion Museum and also Art of Fashion. But then taking those and really switching them up and doing some really cool editorial looks and then some really artistic stuff. So we are playing with some wigs and also some really cool editorial styling. My name is Brenton Lee. For those of you who haven't met me, has anybody been to one of my classes before? Cool. Three people? Perfect. Hi, new people. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. I, uh, I own Brenton Lee Salon in South Pasadena, California. So if you guys are ever that way, come by in South Pass. I'm a platform artist, an educator for Wella. I'm a colorist. And I also am a stylist behind the chair full time still. So very, 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 very busy. But I love it. I love what I do. Who loves what they do? All y'all better raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> raise your hand. Right? Yeah, I love what I do. Tell you guys a little bit about myself, my story, where I came from. I started cutting hair when I was 13. I just turned 14 yesterday. So it's been, what, like a year or so? No, I'm just kidding. I just turned 25 two weeks ago. So I started cutting hair when I was 13. So what is that, like 12 years? I started going to beauty school when I was 16. So I got a really, really young start. I, I love cutting hair. I actually started off as a barber. That's kind of how I got into hair. I got tired of my mom cutting my hair. All right, you know, I got to the age where I was like, I got to look cute. I got to look good. So I started cutting my own hair. But then I started cutting, you know, my cousin's hair, my brother's hair. I just wanted to be a barber. I was always into art and drawing, painting, different stuff like that. So I felt like it came natural, you know, paint, you know, cutting designs and guys' hair and stuff like that. Never thinking I was going to go to cosmetology school. So then I started talking to different barbers, hairdressers. And then you know when you're in high school and they make you start doing career planning? Like, what are you going to do when you get out of high school? I didn't know anything else. I was like, I'm going to be a, a barber, All right? Started talking to different hairdressers and hairstyles and stuff. They're like, why don't you go to cosmetology school? At the time, you know, I'm young, first years in high school. And I'm like, what the heck do I look like going to beauty school, you know? Hmm. I'm, a, mm, I'm a barber, you know? <laughs> And then I was, all, I was into sports as well in high school. So I was like, what does it look like me being, you know, the starting point guard for my high school, but then going to beauty school, then going to track practice, you know, rolling perm rods. So it was kind of a little thing that I was like, I didn't want people to know. But anyway, I, I loved it. When I started actually doing hair and actually started going to beauty school, I fell in love with it. Okay. My thing was, if I'm going to do this, so I, I made my decision, I'm going to do hair, all right? And I want you guys to think about that too. Why is it that you're here? Why are you in beauty school, right? Is it something that you love to do? Is it because you love being creative? Do you love making people feel good? What is it about hair that, that keeps you going or gets you up every morning to go clock in? I told myself, if I'm going to do hair, I'm going to be the best at it, okay? So you hear big names like Paul Mitchells, right? You hear big names like Vidal Sassoon's. I said, why not Brenton Lee? You know, I want it to be great and prove, and prove I'm good. You know, and practice, 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 and get better and better and better. I did a lot of competitions within my career in school. Probably over 20 competitions while I was in school. Like I said, I wanted to prove I was the best. I wanted to be the best. And I felt like competitions is what kind of gets your name out there. You know, if you want to be a big time stylist of Vidal Sassoon or Paul Mitchell, you got to be competing and get your name out there. So that's something I wanted to do. And ended up winning over 20 awards as a student. Okay, I was all over the place. As soon as I finished school, um, went right into the salon. Went right behind the chair, started doing hair. Went right on the platform as well, working for a company doing education. So those are two things I knew I wanted to do, be behind the chair, building a clientele, but also I love to teach. I just love helping people. You guys see those wristbands, influence and growth and beauty. I love to influence and, and help people. Okay, so that's what we're about as a brand. One thing that I, I will share with you guys too, when I, was, when I was 13 years old, something that I felt like was really life changing for me, I, I lost my father, okay, to a severe, severe heart attack. And it was something that that really changed who I was as a man. I feel like that's what made me 
so driven to want to do more. I had to grow up really, really fast. I had to almost, you know, be a man at a really, really young age and, and want to grow and prosper more. Okay, one thing he told me was, before he passed away, is you can do anything in this world as long as you put your mind to it. Okay, and I want you guys to remember that. You can do anything in this hair industry. If you want to be an artist on stage, if you want to do celebrities, if you want to do whatever it is, you can do anything, okay? Just keep working hard, and I guarantee you can accomplish anything in this industry, all right? So now, fast forward in a few years, I've been out of school now for four, four to five years. I just opened a salon last year, which is going really, really good. Now we have about 13 hairdressers in there, and we're always looking for more. So if you guys are looking for assistant positions when you guys get out of school, feel free to contact us and come up there. All right? Here doing the show, we, we travel a lot throughout the country doing a lot of the big shows, also doing a lot of shows for well as well. I love color. Who loves color? All right, cool. Who loves cutting? Styling? Cool. So with our models today, pretty cool concept. I wanted to switch it up a little bit and play with some wigs, some really cool colors. All the wigs that you guys are going to see, we actually hand colored them ourselves. Me and Tiffany up here spent like countless hours coloring wigs. But it was actually really fun. So if you guys have any questions about the formulas, feel free to ask. If you have any questions about the, the styles that we're doing as well, feel free to ask as well, all right? You guys ready to see some hair? Yeah. Yes. All right, cool. So the inspiration was fashion museum, all right? So we're thinking like, if you saw a model in a fashion museum, what would her hair look like? And then also art of fashion, okay? So then we're gonna take our fashion museum girl and take her to more being like, red carpet almost, just pretty hair. And then our Art of Fashion girls, we're gonna take them to be a little bit more editorial. So say like magazine stuff. Come on up, come on up. Everybody, this is Tiffy. Everybody say, hey, hey Tiffy. Hey, hey. Well, actually, Woo! Tiffany. I call her Tiffy, that's her nickname. <laughs> come on up, you guys. So again, I, I work for Wella. So these are all colored. These wigs are colored with Wella color. Playing with the, the special mixes. This, this wig was actually already blonde, but we bleached it out even more and then put pastel pinks and pastel purples throughout it. Really cool color, right? Mm -hmm. This one here was more of our cooler tone. So we wanted to play with turquoises and kind of turquoise greens. So same thing, just kind of giving like a soft kind of ombre-ish, reverse ombre, you should say, going from lighter to darker on the ends, and then putting more of like a pastel color to a deeper blue-greenish color on the ends. Wigs are fun. Yeah, do you, anybody do photo shoots in here? We love playing with wigs when we're doing shoots and just kind of, you know, having just a, a, a different approach to being creative. I'm actually cut just a little bit of, of a fringe on her. What did what you, you just spray in her hair? It was just a little hairspray. Okay. Yeah, just a little hairspray. Okay. I'm just going to cut just a really, really strong fringe on her. All right, just going in and really just cutting a really blunt. line just to open up her face and really just give this wig just a little bit more character. So would you guys do this behind the chair? Possibly not. But what I want to share with you guys is more technique. Alright? Notice how I'm holding my shears and I'm just moving that moving blade, which is allowing me to cut a nice, clean, solid line. All right, so practice this with your shears. Only moving that thumb, all right, and cutting a nice, solid, clean line. But notice also, too, my stance when I'm cutting here. Okay, this is the money-making stance. You see that? 
knees nice and bent, okay? And making it really look like I know how to cut hair. All right, remember that. Your client knows if you know how to cut hair. Do you agree? Yes. Me getting in and cutting it like this versus... <laughs> Okay, so really practice your technique and look like an artist. We're all artists, right? Yes. We're all artists. So really practice your technique, how you stance, how you, how you cut hair. Practice only moving that moving blade so that you can cut really, really clean and structured lines. And this goes even if it's not a wig. How can you really cut really, really good hair? And it's just practice, practice, practice. Okay, so just cut, open up that wig and really cut in a nice, clean line. Ask Tiffy, I'm in the salon showing off all the time. Alright? I'm showing off. For no reason. You know, the lady sitting under the dryer, she don't have nothing better to do. My client, she just loves me putting on a show in front of her. But this is the reason why clients come back to you. Okay, they know that you have that confidence to, to give them a look that'll fit them, but then they also know that you know how to cut hair. And they'll suggest their friends to you because of that. Cool, what do you guys think about that? Pretty cool? Yeah. So we're gonna end up switching her up into her second look tip. You wanna actually start taking that down? If you guys haven't played with Wallet Color, you guys should play with it. Because actually the, the colors, they're not really just put it in a bowl and apply it to the hair. You can really mix stuff and, and really create really, really cool colors. Think of almost like water painting, water painting or playing with, with paint, okay? So this blue was actually mixed with uh, zero stroke two eight, which is like a blue pearl. And then we put a little three three in it to give it more of a gold look, all right? I mean a green look, excuse me. This one here was using pastel developer, all right? Using the well of color using pastel developer. So zero stroke six five, which is kind of like a red violet. The more developer of pastel, the lighter the color will be. So you can kind of really tailor the colors to fit, you know, the look that you want to get. This is going to be more of our red carpet kind of softer look. So basically, all we did was I have Frankie pull this into a really really smooth sleek ponytail, braided this here, and then just pin these braids nice and tight. And then we did a pin curl set here in the front. Pink curls just like you would do in beauty school, all right? And we're gonna actually switch this up and give it just a really, really soft kind of texture look. So same thing with this wig. We just went and cut more of a, a stronger fringe but left her, her left side a little bit heavier just to kind of cover one eye. Just something cool, creative, and a little bit different. Now this is gonna be our fashion museum model. So taking her from being a little more fashion forward and she's gonna be our editorial girl. Cool? So this is also going to be our red carpet girl as well. The editorial girls are coming up next. So Frankie basically set these just with a, a one inch iron. Okay? Just put some texture in it and then put them flat just like pin curls. I hated pin curls in beauty school. I hated finger waves and pin curls. Just remember those things that you're learning are almost like foundational skills that I guarantee no matter what you're going to bring back sometime in the future. And it's crazy how much I hated finger waves and I hated perms and stuff like that, but all that stuff is, is no matter what is going to come back. It's almost like trends that will never go out of style. We're going to talk about a few different things that I want to share with you guys. Okay, so now just starting to brush this out and now notice how I'm still going to kind of go back to that classic finger wave set, which I hated, but now I love. Because those little tips and techniques that you learn will still come into play. And now what we did, we took horizontal sections when we curled this, all right? Horizontal sections, so that it'll start giving it that wave effect when we start brushing it out. Did you put product when you? Yep, just set it with a little bit of the Stay Essential hairspray, the Wella hairspray. And then just use the one inch iron, just curl everything on it, but then lay them flat, kind of like paint curls. Okay, so I'm just going to brush, brush, brush. So this is a couple tips. When you're even brushing out your curl set, 
if you brush underneath, you're going to keep a lot of the texture in it. If you're brushing from on top, you're going to pretty much smooth everything out and kind of get one kind of wave effect. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm starting on the ends because I still want to see a lot of that texture. So I'm brushing underneath. But then here on the top, I'm going to brush this flat because I really want to get a nice little wave set right there. All right, so here we go. The things I hated to do. Now we, we set this just dry with hairspray, but now we're going to go in and pretty much act like you're doing your finger waves. Okay, and then we have some clips, some duck bill clips. All right, so giving it that, that kind of swoop there first. You start seeing what you like, that kind of wave, then spray. All right, because that's exactly what I want locked in position. Okay, so kind of swooping there first. We're going to pin it. All right, bring that, that ridge there, but bring that second wave kind of low into her face. That pin is going to be pinned that way since that C shape is going that way. And now the second one will be pinned going that opposite direction. You guys see that? And really just starting to create that soft, that pretty wave. So we got C shape going that way, C shape going this way. Now we're going to come back going away from her face. really start defining that wave and you can just take your time and really get a smooth but pretty look with this. Once you like what you see the texture then we'll spray. Okay again I want it to look really pretty kind of red carpet but then at the same time I want it to look pretty cool and editorial as well. So here on the ends I'm just going to slightly back brush, but still leaving a lot of that wave in it. Okay, not letting it look too perfect. Still something kind of fun and editorial looking. Almost something that you will see in a red carpet slash editorial magazine. Actually, let me have one more clip, please. Turn to the side so that they can see. And then we'll spray. So see, pinning away. Now this will get pinned forward. Just kind of defining those ridges. And then we'll just kind of frizz out the bottom just a little bit. Nothing too frizzy. And this is where you just kind of take your time and really get a cool shape with it. Now let me have one hair pin or bobby pin. Okay, I'm going to kind of pin this here. Yeah, that's good. Alright, and then just giving it a really, really kind of smooth to a soft texture effect. Once I like it, now we'll spray it into shape. Let me have uh, some spray, please. All right, I want this to kind of dip in her eye a little bit lower. And we'll kind of let that set and then we'll take out the pins. All right, cool. Who likes doing cool styling like this? It's fun, right? And this is something I'm telling you, when you, when you look at any kind of magazine, any kind of Vogue, W, L magazine, you'll always see some type of cool wave set like that. Any of them. All right, cool. You guys give her a hand. We're going to funk it up just a little bit more. Okay, we'll just brush this out. And then really just give it more of a bigger wave texture. Okay. 
Look how when you really get some texture and set the hair, it can really just mold and you can do whatever you want it to do. Okay, so I'm going to just start by back brushing it just a little bit, kind of underneath and on the top a little bit, just to get a little cushion there. But still keep a little more of a fuller kind of wave setting here. So if you just spray it. Okay, so this is the thing I feel like defines that wave is right here in the front. So as long as that looks pretty. And then just giving it a really, really cool, soft editorial look. If you guys are interested in any editorial classes, we host a lot of classes at our salon and also a lot of photo shoots as well. Okay, you'll be able to do some really cool sets, really fun stuff that you can use for your portfolios. Alright, cool, what do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? Just something really, really simple, a really, really cool set and stand up for me, we'll show them in the back. All right, so again, we just took a really, really sleek ponytail, kind of braided it away. Let me have one more hairpin. I want these to be married together. All right, so just putting a couple hairpins in there, almost just giving it like a really, really soft, smooth, but textured look. Go ahead and go down, and you can just walk around so that they can take a look at it. You guys give her a hand. Dry and set. Cool. Now that it's, it's set, I'm going to just kind of start expanding it a little bit, but still keeping that really, really smooth wave in it. I don't want to take away from that. I want this to be a little bit more on the smoother side, but just with a little soft texture on the ends. Okay, turn to us. All right, cool. What do you guys think? Yeah. It's pretty, right? Yeah. So you guys give her a hand. Yeah. So these are our fashion museum girls. So let me clear that up. And we switched them up to a little more red carpet pretty hair. Art of fashion girls. You guys want to come up? I have a yeah, huh? Quick. Um, when you said you used the one inch printed iron yep. for the paint girls. So which way did you go? It's just everything, just under. Under? Yeah. So like. Oh, okay, good question. So right here, we, it was off of a deep part, just took horizontal sections and did everything going this way. Back. Going towards the right. Okay. Yeah, so her right side. Yeah. I always like to curl the direction that I'm actually going to have that style go to. So if, if I curled it this way, it wouldn't have laid as smooth. Yeah, so good question. So just playing with a little bit more color and textures on these girls. How about one of you guys, you guys can sit at the seat and you can just stand here in the middle. Okay? Same thing, all these wigs were prepared with Wella hair color. This one playing with a little more deeper turquoise. And then kind of just painted almost like a really soft ombre-ish as well. Painted some pink on the ends. Alright? And these are our artsy fashion girls that will get switched up to a little bit more editorial look. And you guys will see the set that we have for these girls as well. Alright, so just playing with just cool texture and shape. Alright, smooth texture with a little bit of a frizzier texture. And Tiffany is actually going to help me demo on how we got this texture. Alright, so we'll show you guys that. You got everything? Okay. We'll show you guys how we got this texture. Here, we played with kind of oranges and pastel oranges. Really cool, fun colors. I, I love doing color. This is how I love to, you know, kind of express myself. 
you know, just really, really cool stuff. Same thing, playing with the really, really cool fringe. We're going to just clean up the shape a little bit. I want everything kind of blunt, but then we'll also add a little bit of interior layers in just a second. Okay, so just creating a nice, clean, almost boxy shape with this wig. Okay, turn towards the other side. Okay, so same thing. Just moving that moving blade, okay? I want to create a nice, clean, solid line. Same thing here in the fringe. Here I want to create a little bit of texture. So if you want to create some texture in haircuts, what would you do? Slide cut, we can create some texture. What else? Point, cut. Point cutting. Finish. Maybe using a razor. All right, anything the opposite of just blunt cutting. So just a couple techniques. When you are cutting, let's say, some, some texture in the hair. We can create this just a little bit softer. OK, I'm lifting this up. Same thing. We're just going to be moving our thumb. All right, so I want you guys to practice that when you go back and you have your shears. Practice putting your, your shears on your hand or rest them on the table, okay? And then just work that thumb, all right? Just work that thumb, not this, okay? Have a lot of control. Be a, practice being a really, really good hair cutter, all right? You guys practice being a really, really good hair cutter. You know why? Because as long as people's hair is growing, guess what? You have a job, right? So practice being a really, really good hair cutter. Or as long as people are getting older, guess what? You got a job too, because people want their hair colored, right? So remember that. Practice being a good colorist, but also be, practice being a great hair cutter. So notice, I'm giving myself a lot of room all right, giving myself a lot of room to really cut deep into the hair. And notice, same thing, only moving my thumb. All right, I gave myself a lot of room. Look at that, about what, an inch to two inches, inch and a half or so, to really cut and create that almost wispy razor with a lot of texture. And one thing I'm doing too, which is a big tip, is I'm closing my shears on the way out. Okay, you guys see that? Who's cut themselves before? Raise your hand, all y'all cut yourself. I still cut the crap out of my fingers. But as long as you're closing your shears on the way out, when you're point cutting, and just moving that moving blade, you won't cut yourself. Okay, so I'll show you guys again. I'm lifting up this section, giving myself a good amount of room to really cut a lot of texture in there, okay? And I'm closing my shears on the way out. As long as you're closing your shears on the way out, you don't even have to look, okay? I just know I won't cut myself, all right? So practice that. Are you using? These ones here are Hanzo. I feel like shears are shears though, as long as they're good and sharp. Japanese stainless steel, whatever it is. So yeah, but invest in a good a pair of shears. You're only as good as your, your tools, right? So invest in a good pair of shears. These, um, I don't know how much these were. These are a few hundred dollars, six inch. But I have every shear from like two and a half inches to seven inch. Because you'll use different size shears for different things. But yeah, it's always good to have a good, sharp pair of shears. Do you like the ones that are curved? Um, actually, no. I really no. never used them. I've played with them before, but I feel like I can do the same thing with these. Yeah. Sometimes they will help you get a more curved line, but I really don't do a lot of curved lines like that anyway. I like a lot of kind of blunt, clean lines, if you notice in a lot of my work. All right, cool. What do you guys think about this wig? It's pretty, right? Yeah. This color is amazing. This was actually one of my 
favorite one. So same thing as that texture here. We played with a really frizzy, nice, soft, kind of still touchable texture. This was also playing with the special mix in Wella, the zero stroke four three, which is like a red gold. And then we painted some brown on the ends. All right, so just kind of playing with warm and cool tones. Up to what level do you put liner in the um, wigs to get those colors? Good question. If you want pastel -y tones like that, it needs to be as blonde as blonde as possible. As light as light as possible, as pale as it can be. If you want like more deeper tones like this, you don't really need to take out that undertone. So this one, we just put the blue and the purple on. These, these wigs already came pretty blonde. But to get the pastel because you need to really get it like as pale as possible. Yeah. And then the blonder it is, and you put like some really fun colors on, the truer the color it's gonna be. So we use pipe cleaners. Okay? We use pipe cleaners. Tiffany, why don't you show one before we completely take it off? Alright? Foils and pipe cleaners. Yep, just just simple little flimsy things. Where are we getting at? Michaels? From Michaels. So basically what we're doing is we're we're folded in half almost like a hairpin. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about these is with longer hair you'll have more room to play with it. But then at the same time too, like hairpins don't bend as easy as these, so they're easier to put on the hair. Now while we use the foil why we use the foil is to have a lot of control over the ends. Okay, so we just place the foil here on the ends. Placing the foil here on the ends. And then you're going to start here so we can get that nice tight texture. And then just going in and out. In, out, in, out. Okay, so now when you get to the foil, it's pretty much still the same thing. Now this is why it's, it's a little easier with these, because you can just start folding the foil. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Around like the pipe cleaner. Yeah, huh? Kind of like breeding. Yeah, right? So now you got the ends in there as well. Okay, so after it's set, then we'll heat it up with the flat iron. So then when you pull this out, you see you get that kind of zigzag texture. Awesome. Okay, you get that kind of zigzag texture. Now when you after you get this texture and you actually start brushing through it and loosening it up, loosening it up, you actually start really getting like a big kind of frizzy but still cool zigzag texture and you can get it as big as you want the more you brush it and kind of start teasing it. So we'll just take them out but we'll, we'll save it for main stage to completely finish up. Now the set here on the top or what we did with the set we just took like a, let me turn it towards the front really quick. We just took like a really, really deep kind of side sections and then did a braid down the middle and then a really, really, really smooth on the sides, okay? And then later we'll more kind of play with this braid, giving it a lot of texture and really make this really, really full on the back. She has really curly, well not really curly, but slightly wavy hair, which is pretty cool too because it'll actually give it a little bit more texture. Same thing, took deep part with the braid in the middle but for her, we actually just used a really, really small curling iron. So we can have two different textures. And she also has really big, full hair too, or a lot of hair. So we can really start expanding this and giving this a lot of texture here in the back. Okay, pretty cool, right? Just something fun and different I wanted to do. Just playing with a little bit more editorial stuff like this. And this is stuff that we would do, you know, for a photo shoot and shoot this. But I just want you guys to write down three things. All right, goals, write down goals. All right, the second thing I want you to write down, mentor. 
And then for the third thing, I want you to write down education. All right? Goals, mentor, and education. All right? Now let's kind of think about those three things and kind of talk about them. You guys are good. Thank you, guys. You guys give them a hand. Tiff, you. you can finish setting us. If you guys have any questions or you kind of want to see this a little closer, feel free to come up after class and or watch Tiffany right now about that set that she did. Okay, so goals first. Like we were kind of talking about earlier, you can do anything, right? As long as you continue to put your mind to it. All right? So always set goals. Like we were talking about earlier, why are you here? That's more living in the present. But then what are your goals? Now let's think about the future. Where do you see yourself in two years? Where do you see yourself in five years? All right? If you want to be behind the chair and build a clientele, then start looking for the salon. Start setting those goals right now. All right, you guys, don't wait until you get out of school. Who knows where they want to work when you get out of school? A couple people. All right, so this is my challenge for you guys. We're all in here to make some money and build a clientele, right, and do pretty hair. So let's start finding exactly what it is that we want to do when we get out of school, all right? Don't wait until you get out. We can start putting that, that plan uh, together right now. As soon as I started school, I knew exactly where I wanted to work. And I did a two-year program. And that two years while I was in, in school, I was stocking the salon that I wanted to work at. Okay, no joke, I was stocking the place. It was salon sessions in Pasadena. I really, really wanted to work there. Why? Because they offered education. It was a nice, big, diverse salon. It was somewhere where I saw myself working. So remember that. Where do you see yourself working? And set those goals to put yourself there. I would literally go to the salon and, and I would stock the place like this, just <laughs> watching people do hair. No, I'm serious. So I'm not saying go stock salons. If you want to, you could. Come to our salon, all right? Come to our salon. Feel free to hang out with us, check out things, you know, see what we're doing in there, and we're open, okay? We'll, we'll share any knowledge or anything that we can share with you guys, but, all right? So, so going to point number two, mentor, right? I knew I wanted to work there because Nico, he was the owner. He was somebody who I really looked up to. He was somebody who I really wanted to mentor me. Would you guys agree there's always somebody out there that knows more than you, right? Yeah, of course. Whether it's color, whether it's hair cutting, whether it's just life in general. So start looking for those good mentors who can help you be and, and get those those dreams that you guys want to do. Alright? So if you want to be in the salon, start looking for those good salons and good mentors. If you want to be up here and do platform work, start looking for the companies and people who can teach you to, to be a good platform artist. Alright? If you want to do editorial and magazine things, start looking for those. Alright, so everybody has some homework to do, right? Everybody has some homework to do. Okay, and point number three, education. Alright? Education is, is everything. All right? if, you, if you come to my salon and you see my DVD collection, I have a collection literally this huge of videos and DVDs from every company you can think of, from Vidal Sassoon to Paul Mitchell to whatever it is. And I feel like that's how I got to you know, know as much and get the skills that I have now, just from being educated. Okay, I'm not saying I know everything now, I just like to teach what I know and what really inspires me now. Alright? So education, education, education. Don't just come to my classes, go to everybody's classes and I'm sure you'll pick up a little something from everybody. Okay? And then we put on there, actually with education, I want you guys to put down competitions as well. Alright? I feel like doing a lot of competitions like I was sharing with you guys earlier, that's really helped me get my technical skill together. That's allowed me to do really cool work that can get photographed. Okay? And competitions will literally change your, your career. I'm telling you. Mio's a, well, Mio, if you guys want to know some things about competition, ask Mio. Competitions will change, change your career. Alright? Tiffany also, she just finished school four months ago. 
Okay, she just finished four months ago, but she's my assistant in the salon. She did a huge national competition for it, and she entered into the student category, and she went, she won the gold medal for the whole nation. Okay, this is Wella's biggest competition, and she won the gold medal as a student, which now she's only been out, of, out for four months has really took her career already to the next level. Published in different magazines and just getting a lot of exposure. Okay, now that's not for everybody, but if that is what you want to do, I really, really highly suggest doing some competitions. Alright? Any other questions? Questions, comments? Go ahead. Um, something that I've, it's not that it's hard, but um, a lot of people sometimes lose passion. What is something that helps you keep that passion? Those three things we just talked about. Okay. If you really, really think about it, because maybe you're not really passionate because you don't have goals right or you're not being around those mentors who are keeping you inspired you see what I mean mm -hmm. or you're not educated enough so maybe that's a little discouraging so it's a little bit of all three of those things setting your goals what do you want to do why am I here okay why am I in beauty school surrounding yourself around those people who can take you to the next level mentors colleagues you know you guys inspire me just as much as I can inspire you, to, to be honest. All right? It just, you know, to see you know, how you guys want to learn and you guys are here at the shows, is, it actually really, really, really is inspiring. So when I come to these shows, it's not just to share what I know. It's really to almost inspire me as well. Okay? And that's something you always want to keep yourself around, which keeps you passionate and inspired. So I just want to end with this. Just remember, you guys, you can do whatever it is that you desire to do, but you have to put yourself in that position to do it.